Nolan, all right. All righty, well, welcome to The Legend of Donut Steel. Uh, and funny enough, this panel's about OCs, and I have a special OC for you. It is the OC of a madman. Guten Tag, Brawly Pitbull! So you thought you could get away with another convention without me? Well, we shall see about that! Not so fast, Viva von Heckelstein! Oh no! It's Captain Manly Fists, also known as Anthony C, star of such works as Nightmare Night 2014, That Twilight Con Cartoon, and That Cantalot Wedding Review with the Bank Ending. The very same! And I'm not letting you inflict any more triangle mares on the world, you silly little man! Ha! Not this time, Captain! This time, I've got a machine! Why, oh, Jingo, what does it do? Observe! <laughs> I just turned those San Francisco gay! You toss her, not San Francisco! You... Wait, and that was Babs gone. <laughs> what? Yes, this is Baltimore. San Francisco Bay Area Brony Spectacular was three months ago. Cox! That was my last Doomsday device! <laughs> Looks like you've snookered yourself again, Hecklestein. Well, I only wanted everybody to have a fabulous weekend. Oh, I'm sure they will. Pip pip brony con, see you next time. Yes, next time. Next time! <laughs> For those who might be wondering, joining the marvelously talented Anthony C is a very I'm a toon link. He was the, yes. he's the fantastic person who has animated such things as the Brony Hearth Swarming Eve, the shipping game, where I got shipped with the dragon. Oh, it's weird. I have weird friends who have weird fantasies about me. Now, one more time for our Australian friends who sent that fantastic video. Let's give them a shout out. Thank you, you magnificent people. I see you. Uh, I, well, when you try to see the whole room, it's just like, okay, now I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> also, I guess the horseshoe crew left me uh, a souvenir. It it smells of bitterness. But you, yes, you came here to see Donut Steel, so let's get this party started. From days of 2011, from archive servers of image sites, comes a legend. The legend of Donut Steel, the greatest pony ever. A mighty stallion, loved by his creator, hated by no one else. As Donut Steel's infamy grew, cynicism settled across the fandom. At BronyCon 2015, a presentation will take place, hosted by a morally ambiguous member of the fandom. It will discuss the elements of characterization and reflecting personality through design. This is the story of the challenges faced when designing an original character. To design with intent and focus, and overcome the stigma of Donut Steel, the greatest pony ever. Donut Steel, me so friendly, yes. yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, check out all his majesty. Just want to put one beefy arm and he's ready for burnination. Our, 
All right, well, welcome to The Legend of Donut Steel. I am your humanized hippogriff, Silver Quill, here to host you on this voyage down the insane. And we start off by asking a very question. Who the heck is Donut Steel? Some sort of mutant. Donut Steel. All, all good guesses, all good guesses. But the truth is, there are many faces to the Donut Steel. For example, this fellow. I said, this fellow. There you go. Oh, back it up one. Come here, you. Come up. Hmm. I have a glory hog of a character. Very. He has disappeared on me. And I did. Okay, fine. We have a glory hog character who apparently wants to be summoned on screen. Hmm. And she is a donut steel. She, was, she discovered her magic ability was poison. And so she leads a life of isolation and bitterness, knowing she can never be or love any pony. <gasps> so sad. So sad. And we have another donut steel. This unicorn. Oh, oh no, you say she's an alicorn, but that would make her a Mary Sue. No, no, this is a pony who, a unicorn who fashioned wings and is now as powerful as, as powerful as an alicorn, but she's not an alicorn, so you can't get mad. <laughs> no, you can't, you can't, it's, it's internet law. And uh, I w do want to specify before I go too far, I'm not calling out anyone's actual OCs in the fandom. I don't believe in, in humiliation. Please do. Woo! No, I got these guys by going to the pony generator and hitting the random button a couple times. <laughs> and now, oh, but I said in the pamphlet, I, it is written, pony generator not required. And that's right, I can make a donut steal out of anything. Case in point. <laughs> Sailor Sun! I have a golden crystal that's just as powerful as the silver crystal, which is owned by my sister, Sailor Moo. And we get along great because we have the exact same personality. <laughs> yes. And I am the donut steel known as King Vegito. I am related to Broly and the true heir to the Saiyan race, which was usurped by Prince Vegeta's family. I'm, and even though they took over, we're more powerful, and I can attain a new level of Super Saiyan, which, given the naming conventions right now, would be Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyanly God, God, Saiyanly God, God, Saiyan. <laughs> Three. Oh. Oh, and this is, this is what happens. There are three little words that go with all of these images, all of these ideas, and they just keep coming up. And it's like a signal flare. It's th not quite, that's a different thing. See, Donut Steel is not necessarily Mary Stew. Oh, someone just said it. Called it. Called it. Yes, do not steal. This has been fascinating. Do not steal. So, so people post this online, and you see these words, and I just think, I, I, I don't want it. <laughs> and yet people put it because they're afraid people will take away their creation. And here's the hard thing. When you create something, even if it seems like it's just been done very hastily, someone put a little investment in it, it can hurt when people call Mary Sue Donut Steel. The goal here is not to humiliate. The goal here is not to discourage you folks watching on YouTube or you folks in the audience. But here's the thing. Do not steal usually goes with something that people feel isn't really ready to be stolen. Like the Tedros? Ooh, the Tedros? Oh my. No. And do not steal became donut steal. So now we're all on the same page. Believe me, I've blown a few minds in the YouTube world. You can hear the pop. <laughs> wow. Is it? I appreciate it. I'm sorry. Oh, we're going to have a mic later for Q&A, so can we come back to you? All right, so we're going to have a Q&A. I promise I'll give everyone a chance to speak as best I can. So, but here's the thing. OCs have a pretty negative reputation in just about any fandom. doesn't matter what. Trekkie, Whovian, Browncoat. Taken from us too soon. I'm not Sonic. I'm my original character. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Sonic. All right. A challenge to you all. To the Googles, type in your name and the hedgehog. You will have an OC whether you like it or not. 
And some, so this stigma about OCs, people have gone out of their way to denounce it. In fact, one guy took a very culinary approach. a sorcerer. You know, I heard that Baltimore has a uh, illusionist uh, performance coming in, the biggest illusionist of all time. They should have hired that guy. <laughs> now me, you know, I am one to brag. Very much. If, the vid if my computer will work with me, come on. I'm one to brag when my computer works with me because I have created the greatest OC of all time, yes. Yeah. Yes. This. This, this marvelous, the Ferrari of OCs. The greatest, hey, single the greatest single design that one could ever mask, and I know that's intimidating. Dude. And I know that you might feel intimidated, but I beg you to stay strong and remain brave because we have much to talk about. Very important things of this perfection hey, that hey, you dude. might be able hey, to reach. Hey, and I mean hey, very dude. serious hey, here right dude. now. Dude. And I appreciate dude. it if we could just focus. Dude, 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 Hey, dude. What? Aren't you forgetting someone? What? No, 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 I'm not. Hey, everyone. Would you like to see Silverquill's first attempt at drawing a pony? No! Oh, no, 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 Oh, yes, ah. drink it all in. The anime hair, the complex cutie mark, the nuclear blue bombardment of your eyeballs, and the body type that appears to be a mutant hot dog. Here's the simple truth in designing, friends. It's a constant process. There's never an end, only improvements. And the goal is not to be the greatest, but to be better than you were. So I hope you all enjoy a wonderful brony con. I'll see you online. And always remember, all of the great authors and artists begin more than just how they started. Michael Bay Splosions, play me off. They say that when you put a lot of heart into your character, he comes alive. I'm still trying to figure out how to kill mine. Oh, oh kill it with fire. Ah, oh, yes, but this, this brings back memories. Back when I started in My Little Pony, this was the first drawing I ever did for a pony. I wanted to make an OC. I always want to make an original character when I join a fandom. Somehow it's just the need to make a personal mark. So I created Clutter Step, and I think I made just about every mistake in the book. Every single one. Except for being an alicorn, I, I made that, I made a choice for an earth point because I hadn't seen a lot of earth point OCs. So here's the thing. There are a lot of OCs that you look at and you're not really intrigued by them. And I understand individual OCs can turn people off, but I love the ideal behind original characters, just as I enjoy the ideal of fan fiction, fan art. What you start with an OC, with your own drawings, with your own work, is gonna last beyond this fandom. Someday the show will end. I know. I know. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Hey. Tranquilo, tranquilo. We gotta make room for Generation 5. <laughs> or My Little Pony, the next generation. There you go. Or maybe some folks will uh, decide to move on. But the thing is, Everything that you build as a fan is the perfect time to make mistakes, to test out new things, to feel like you're, you're just enjoying it and you're growing through that enjoyment. Because what you build is going to go forward from there. So even if you change views, maybe if My Little Pony isn't your thing at some point, the artwork, the creativity, that's going to carry over in ways you never imagined. Case in point, I, like I said, I've been a part of several big fandoms never tried what I'm doing now, enjoying it immensely. We'll see how that goes moving forward. And much like my artwork, 
or rather, much like my time in the fandom has evolved, so too has my design of the character. And I beg my friends, I'm going to wander this way because I'm neglecting this half of the room. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me, everyone. So, but that raises a lot of questions about how to design an OC. Because it's not just a look. Everything about a character is expressed in their design, in how they behave. Basically, you want people to see that this is something you've put a lot of time and thought into to create a cohesive whole. So before you even begin, when you're just the outline of a pony, that's it. When you're scary rainbow dash into stupor. <laughs> Always remember, the first thing to do is to know your character, which sounds easy, but it's not. You might actually take yourself by surprise a few times. But it's important to know your character, how they react, how they think, how they perceive the world, because everything is reflected through design. Your personality is going to shine through with just a look. So I'm going to stress that again because it's kind of important. Design reflects personality. Look at these ponies. <laughs> the eyes. Well, oh, don't worry, we'll get into the eyes. But have we? All, but I'd like you to think back to the very first time you saw these characters. Maybe it was just an internet post. Maybe it was someone doing a news story. For me, Red versus Blue was one of my first introductions. That's right. But, look, but just looking at each character, you can get a guess at the uh, archetype. Applejack Stetson, okay, hey, got a little bit of country right there. Rainbow Dash has this cocky attitude. She's probably really competitive. Looks like the athletic type. Pinkie Pie's bubbly mane. Oh, she looks like she's fun. Curvy, elegant mane of rarity. Oh, I thought when I first saw her, oh, I'm probably not gonna like her. She seems like a prima donna. I was wrong. <laughs> I, I, I will say she's, she is maybe a little bit of a on, but oh, I adore her. And Fluttershy with those droopy eyes. She looked really gentle. The only pony I really couldn't place her personality was Twilight, who seems to be sort of neutral. And that she's the main of the main six. I had plenty of time to get to know her. Oh, and Spike's there too. <laughs> even, even in my panels, the pork boy gets no love. Uh, oh, well, we'll be getting a Princess Spike in due time, promise. Yeah. All right, but let's talk about characterization, because here's the thing. With pretty much any OC I've witnessed online, strong, needing development, one thing a lot of people have down right away is their biography. But then they stop there. Biography is something that are things that have happened to your character, and it's important. Everyone in this room has their biography, things they've experienced, things they've been, Friends, family, relations, there's a story in there. However, that's the world acting upon you. You've been, you're in the world, you're acting on it, but events are happening to you. Perhaps you're helping make them happen, I certainly hope so. But it's external. Where I don't see a lot of development in OCs, and this is perhaps where people tend to shortchange themselves, is personality. This is how you react to those events in life. Do you get mad? Do you accept it? Do you take defense behind humor? Do you look for protection from others? Or do you try to assert itself head on? This is how you are going to react to the future. And if people don't know how their character is going to react, all they really know is sort of a bit by bit spreadsheet. You know, just bullet points. Here's what happened to them. Here are their parents and siblings. Here is what they uh, do uh, for a job. Okay, what do they do? What do they do when Tyrick attacked? they were going to work. <laughs> so, so, uh, so now for, uh, for characterization, there are a lot of methods to help get to know your character. In fact, there's an entire book on it. Getting into character, seven, seven secrets a novelist can learn from actors. Because that, believe it or not, method actors and, art, and writers, artists share a lot in common. There are a multitude of techniques for getting to know a character and really getting inside their head so that they stop just being words on a page. And I'm going to spoil at least one of those techniques, but I'd recommend you all check out the book. But first, I'm going to talk about one of the most important elements. This is where the Mary Stu, Gary Stu stigma can come in, when there aren't enough flaws. And people say, oh, well, you know, my character, he's just so brave and awesome. Only the villain can really turn that to their advantage. 
well, then you've just said your character is so awesome that you'd have to be an awful person to not get along with them. It's, how many of us can really say that about any individual? Believe me, guys, my, my idols were in the 80s. I'm going through a very difficult period right now. <laughs> oh. oh, dear. No, in my eyes, when you take a character's greatest strength, their courage, their kindness, their knowledge, their energy, if you dial it up to 11, if you take it beyond the norm, it becomes their vice. Your character is brave, then he's reckless. If your character reaches out to people very easily, then he might not respect privacy. If your character is assertive and just knows how to stand up for themselves, might not know when to back off or when a little peaceful word might help. These are flaws that we all experience day to day, and these are flaws that can undermine our relationships with others. Just like flooring. Huh? But one of the surest ways to get to know a character is to conduct an interview. This is one of, probably my favorite technique from that book. All right. And, and just like that, the blood sugar in the room spiked. All right. So this is a good place. This is where your biography does come into the character's development. So you sit, you, imagine sitting your character down in a chair. That has a very curious mark. I'm going to touch on that. Uh, basically, you just start with the biography and you just inquire about it. Ask. In fact, you can reduce this technique to one thing, one word. Say with me now, Animaniacs, Buttons, uh, buttons and Mindy. Why? Why? Uh, oh, come on. I know there are Animaniacs fans in this crowd. Good. 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 OK. OK. Right. Exactly. All right. So uh, I'm going to save Q&A for a little bit. I'm also going to wait for my screen to stop flickering. So I promise Q&A will come at the end. But I just want to talk about Let's say we have a character who wants to be a great adventurer. And OK, yes, and well, why do you want to be a great adventurer? Because they do things of renown. Well, why do you want to, why do you want to be renowned? Because then ponies will, will see me and know who I am. Why is that important? Because it makes me feel good. Well, why does that make you, why does it make you feel good? Because I know someone's thinking about me. Well, why is that important? Because I'm afraid to be alone. Why are you afraid of being alone? Because then I know that I haven't made a mark on the world. I came and I went and nothing mattered. That, and suddenly you think, oh wow. Whoa, you just hit an emotional nerve. This guy, he's driven to do great and noble things, but it's all driven by insecurity. There's this, there's this splinter under the skin of this armor. I'm not gonna say shining armor, that's a different one. <laughs> this is the weakness that's driving him. He's so driven by his own ego that's going to undermine him throughout any adventure, any challenge, any trial. He's got to remove that splinter. He's got to face the fact that he's afraid of being forgotten. And perhaps to become a real hero, he's got to learn it's not about him. Save the world and no one notices. Hey, there's an interesting story. So just by asking why, 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 suddenly you have a little bit better understanding of the character and the thing that can drive them and undermine them. So it may, sometimes you, now some people, they need to draw the character first just to get an image and start this process, but then please be ready for revision. You're gonna do it again and again, because it's always a process. So once you have an idea about your character, obviously I've, I've gone through this at light speed because this can be a long process, and don't be afraid if you're taking a while. Quality takes time, <laughs> after the fact. Ha ha ha, yeah, it's shameless, I am, I am. All right, but then there's also character interactions because let's face it, eh, we don't always get along. Now, a lot, another stigma about OCs is that they are best friends with all the main six. Now, I am not against the idea of writing a story where your character gets to meet our heroines. In fact, that seems like a really good idea. You're basing your character off several really established characters, but personalities attract or repel one another. Maybe we're more drawn to people who are uh, you know, friendly and outgoing, or maybe we really admire people who just don't care what you think. They got attitude. So again, we might be attracted to those personalities, and it's gonna vary from person to person, but then that's ask yourself, okay, my character is very heroic, loves to get in the middle of action, is on this, on this quest. Is he gonna think very highly of Fluttershy? 
This timid little pony, he might dismiss her right away. Never mind that she's a national heroine to save the world like five times, but these are ponies, they forget. <laughs> but also, just know that he might not get along with Fluttershy, but that doesn't mean he hates him. I think that's what people are afraid of, that if your character hates one of the main six, the audience will hate him or her. I keep saying him because, well, hi. <laughs> but uh, basically, if they disagree, that's another challenge to overcome. That's a great story. You have two characters who are opposed. Wow, it's almost like they're arguing in the middle of a rainstorm. And then all of a sudden, the whole adventure is them finding reconciliation dealing with external problems, but gaining respect. There you go, there's another interesting story to talk. So, and interactions are symbiotic. How you interact with one friend is gonna interact with another. The strains put on one friendship can influence another. Let's say you have a heroine who came to Twilight to study some extra magic, but she's constantly annoyed with how Pinkie Pie is interrupting them with party cannons and uh, and invitations, and she just wants Pinky to go away. Well, Twilight is going to have some words on that, and that's okay. In fact, that's great. There's another thing, letting your character learn from others. So, because your character is a part of Equestria, and they need to interact with it, but they also need to look like they belong. This is where that our culinary friend who, uh, with the pasta comes into play. Uh, the screenshot was uh, rather small, but you saw how garishly dressed that pony was in neon signs. I'm trying to distract you from how I drew clutter step in the original. <laughs> yes, trying to just forget that. Oh, no, don't say that. that we all start. Believe me, I, like I say, I do OCs every fandom I've been in. I've gone from stick figures, trust me. So don't worry about uh, its simplicity. Don't worry if your character looks like the ponies in the show. I feel like one of the big things driving OCs is that people want them to stand out from the world. They want them to be bold and expressive and to be noticed. But here's the thing, if you, see, if you put that pony in the middle of Ponyville, surrounded by others, they're not standing out in a positive way, they're a distraction. If, some might call it an eyesore. And that's when you start losing your audience. Now people say, oh, but I want my pony to look so unique and you know, the pony forms are pretty basic. There's nothing really stand out about them. I don't know about that. I mean, just look at that. You could go with the bean pole. You could go with the uh, standard uh, stallion or mare stock. I have not seen a lot of the too short variety. They're adorable. <laughs> he looks like a corgi. <laughs> he looks like a corgi. So there's a value to simplicity in minimalism. In try I find that the more you try to add on to your OC visually, the less people are going to take an investment in it. Because they, on some level, people perceive you're trying to be noticed rather than trying to create something solid. And the same goes for non-pony and uh, pony hybrid forms. Say you want a pony and a dragon. V fascinating idea. But I've seen so many where there are scales up and down the leg, uh, arms and, well, they don't have arms, maybe. Unless there are spike in night form. Fetlocks, there's been fetlocks, there are scales, there are jagged wings that look like they take a half hour to draw, like plated armor along them. And you think, okay, one, that can look awesome. I am not denying that an artist's uh, ability can make it just like, whoa. But I'm also saying, I can't see that in the show. It's harder for me to place it in this world that is very strong in our imagination. Now, if you study Spike's design, he's got the banding across his chest, but not a lot of physical scales visible. Just, he says, these are scales, so they look like skin. No, they're scales. Uh -huh. And he's got blue fur. Okay, looks like skin. Ah, and here we have the eyes. Don't, my apologies if this gives you nightmares. They're staring into your soul. Iggy's <laughs> forever. Now they're, but there's a very important thing about eyes because as the windows into the soul, they are the most expressive of features. These are, in my eyes, the most, ooh, in my eyes. <laughs> the most, thank you, thank you. Feed me your symphony of tears. <laughs> These are the most important features of any character because they are what, how your character views the world and indeed how the world views your character. 
I mean, just look at all the shapes we have, and this is just taken from main characters. We've got Rarity and Fluttershy up top. You know, the eloquent eyes with uh, more eyelashes than any other character, as far as I know. The slightly droopy eyes, you can tell Fluttershy's a little prone to depression or discouragement just by the slant. I got to see um, an earlier panel starring Dr. Wolf and the people talking about uh, dealing with disabilities. They showed clips of Coco Pamel, and I realized, hey, she has similar eyes to Fluttershy. You saw how hard she had it. Very gentle soul, but under abuse. Now, Luna is a little sharper. She's, got, she's a little more narrow eyes because she's been through a, a lot. And I know, here we go. Oh, the Luna fanboy is coming out. <laughs> oh, but, but look at Celestia. Oh, let's talk about Celestia because she has equally sharp, she has sharper eyes, very elegant design. But she's also got a little more rounded quality. She's more approachable, more flexible. She's been dealing with, with ponies for a long time and she's just so kind. So that's reflected in her eyes, especially when she smiles and they kind of take an upward turn. Very motherly figure. That's a good point that one of the ways to not trust a character, and I think this might actually work against Celestia, is that her mane covers one eye. You've seen, I mean, come on. Everyone kind of envisions a, if I put an eye up, you're thinking of a pirate right now, aren't you? <laughs> Yar. I don't, it's hard to understand why, but the physical covering, either with hair or a, an article of clothing of some kind, people can assume that somehow that's untrustworthy. I don't know why, but that's part of iconography. We make assumptions based on what we see, sometimes we don't even know why. Now, as your character becomes more, if your character has been through a lot, been hardened, kind of like Luna with her sharper eyes, you start to get into somber territory because as your empathy for the world closes, as your kindness for others closes away, your eyes become smaller and they become harder. It's more square design like Sombra. You'll never see him go full eye like Twilight. And indeed, shining armor on the other end of the spectrum. Very round, somewhat, yeah, somewhat vacant lights. I think I drew this based on a Canterlot wedding. <laughs> or maybe I just realized that's how he is in a lot of episodes. <laughs> and I just lost the shining armor fan, sorry. Twilight. Twilight, oh God, Twilight, all right. But the goal here is to make the eyes stand out from the body. Not so much that they're like glowing, like you expect them to actually pop off a la Looney Tunes or Son of the Mask. <laughs> but you want, you want the eyes to go, you want people to view your character and to kind of focus on their eyes because that leads to the face, that leads to watching their expressions. This is one of the reasons I wasn't a big fan of rainbow power and why I'm a little dubious of superpowers in the future, the designs. Ma multicolored manes and glowing in the tail, uh, hooves are shining, cutie marks on hands. My eyes going over the place, I should be looking at the eyes because that's where the character, where I see into their character. And usually one of the best ways to get a, uh, your character's eyes to stand out is to have an, a color that is complementary to the body color. Very often you'll see if your character has a warmer color scheme, their eyes will be cooler and vice versa. Shining armor is kind of interesting because as a white stallion, oh wait, that's wild stallions. Uh, he had his, all of his eye is tinted a little blue to help it stand out. Twilight's a weird one because she has violet eyes on a violet coat in varying shades. This is a very weird thing. I know some people want to say, oh, it's purple or orchid. I was t I've been taught to say violet. Art, art majors get really mad if you say purple. So there's your trolling lesson for today. Everyone with, at BronyCon is wearing dark violet shirts or purple. <laughs> and they're doing a marvelous job. Thank you, guys. So uh, let's see here. So colors are brought. Oh my god, he's gone to plaid. <laughs> That's, that's, that's right, Clutterstep has reached ludicrous speed. Oh, this, this is my single greatest crime in designing an OC. I love blue, it's my favorite color. 
It's, to me, it's just calm, it's nurturing, it's life, the blue of the oceans, everything about it just makes me thrilled. And I'm seeing so much blue in this room. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you, Princess Luna. Sapphire? Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I thought I saw a black horn, though. That's brown. Brown? Oh, my, well, you can tell how good my eyes are. Hey! Uh, but here's the thing. I made Clutterstep uh, Prismacolor blue. That is pure blue. There is nothing else in it. Uh, RGB scale, there ain't no green or red in here. It's pure blue, and that ain't My Little Pony. My Little Pony is pastels. It's softer tones, more easygoing. You can still have you know, bold colors, but they're just not screaming. And that's one of the problems. And again, people, we love bold colors. We love the things that stand out. Our entire culture is designed around bold colors competing for your eye. Walk down the street here. Keep an eye up and just see how many, how many signs are screaming for your attention with a bright red or a yellow or something that is just meant to compete with everything else around it. And then ask yourself, how am I not blind? Because <laughs> we're doing it to ourselves. We are. So let's talk about color dynamics. There are different kinds of harmonies. Huh? Harmony? Uh, 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 uh. That's right. That's right. Now, here with Applejack is a great example of analogous color scheme. That's where you take a look at a color wheel. You got your primaries, secondaries, and tertiaries. And you just say, OK, here are three colors that are right next to each other. Usually, one's a primary, another's a secondary, and a, third, and a tertiary. Now, one's going to be more dominant than the others. Applejack, in this case, has, I've called her orange in the past, but she really is more of a yellow, has a little bit of yellow tint to that orange, softer. The outlines of her body are darker orange, pure orange. And then she has a blonde mane. So that's an analogous scheme. But they also very subtly add red of a cutie mark in the hair bands and green complements, especially her eyes, which again, stand out more against the other tones. Green is a cooler color. It's going to stand out when surrounded by warm colors. Now, what about a triad? Just draw a triangle on the color wheel, and you might end up with Fluttershy's color scheme, predominantly yellow. It's not pink, it's lightish red. <laughs> and, what, and now that we have a warmer color scheme, even though she's a very timid pony, we have cooler sort of aquamarine eyes. But, blue, but you know, it's a shade uh, just between blue and green. Now, you can also draw a square that's called a quartet. So basically, trying to draw shapes on a color wheel is a great way to determine, OK, I really want my character to be yellow, orange, a shade of green. I don't see a lot of those beyond Granny Smith. Uh, you could be all manner of colors, and they all have meaning. Just do a search online for your favorite color and ask for the psychological meaning behind that color. People love to talk about this. You think Brony reviewers like to go in depth. Color theorists, <laughs> they will get violent about this. <laughs> violent. Oh, well played. Well played. Well played. Give it up for that. Well, all right. And of course, and of course, if we're talking about uh, color dynamics for our main heroines, your color, your color wheel is invalid. She is Rainbow Dash. <laughs> That's right. All righty. So there you go with color schemes. But what about clothing? That's something that makes characters unique. And I can't think of two greater uh, comparisons than the best stallion in, in Canterlock. Shining armors in the Crystal Empire. I'm just throwing that out there right now. OK. OK. Color, similar color schemes. Uh, Fancy Pants has a lighter blue to his mane. And the, so he's a little more delicate, artistic in a way. Softer. Shiny Armor is meant to be the captain of the guard, so he has a slightly bolder blue, but it's not screaming blue in his mane. Shades of age. Oh, I'm not even going there. We're gonna get into we're gonna get into fifty shades of shining armor, and I am not having that. Oh no th I oh, I just gave you all fanfic ideas. What have I done? All right. Go with clothing. Once again, I believe that moderation is key in clothing. 
I, I've seen a lot of OCs where it is hat, glasses, earrings, scarf, vest, tie, horseshoes on front and back. Maybe, I, no, I'm sorry, dude, you actually, I can actually see your pony. I can actually see that pony is red. Some of them I'm just looking and like, I can't see anything. The only thing that people don't seem to put on ponies is pants. He's fancy pants, and he's not wearing pants. <laughs> Now, on the, other set, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the Stetson from Applejack. And that's iconic. That is Applejack. You, you could show a portrait, and you, you, you show a silhouette, rather. And you see the screen flickery. You see, you see uh, an outline with a Stetson. You know, Applejack. It's a no-duh. You take the Stetson away, and Applejack might actually look a little funny, a little weird. So don't be afraid if your character, if you have a piece of clothing for your character, but don't feel like it's a requirement. Again, your character can stand out on their own merits rather than just what you throw on them. Now, speaking of Bronalysis uh, OCs, we have a wealth of, of uh, people, and they design their characters in what, some way that we can emulate in real life. Zach is rocking uh, a red hat. Oh, look at that. Uh, Do Dr. Wolf, best, best dressed reviewer here. He, I believe he had to, to run out, so I'm afraid he's not here right now. Uh, but Dr. Wolf, you'll see him at the con. He's like, dude, you're styling. And I am a failure. <laughs> but, but, but basically, one of, the, one of the traits a lot of reviewers like to do is to have an article of clothing that they can wear in real life to help identify with their character. Hey, that's great. Make it an icon. Make that hat symbolic. So that's an, always an option. But also remember that the more clothing you throw on your, your pony, the more they wear, the more ceremonial. Think about all the times our heroines have worn full clothing from neck to flank. Grand Galloping Gala. Grand Galloping Gala, twice. The wedding, wedding was weird. And the coronation. The dress and the coronations. We've all got our views on. And the, sil the silver bolt? Wonder bolts? Oh, the shadow bolts. Right. And then again, remember the wonder bolts are supposed to be some kind of military organization, maybe. I hope folks got to see Fob Equestria's panel. But, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. But basically, the Wonderbolts serve a function. The Royal Guard serves a function. There's a certain ceremony to that. They wear full uniforms. The more your character wears, like fancy pants, the more they, li again, not wearing pants, uh, the more of a conservative lifestyle, in essence, they lead. More to what? A oh, well, a saddle. They, I, I really don't understand what that's supposed to mean. Why are you wearing a saddle? Okay, well, hey, hey, catch up, said, said the hippogriff. All right, but basically, the more they wear it, the more it's ceremonial. The more uh, conservative it is, the more, in fact, Canterlot, we see ponies in there, they are wearing clothing that is like three times the amount of our normal heroines because Canterlot has this attitude of being really stuffy. And so, and here's Fancy Pants, he's wearing, let's see here, I've never really been clear, because I've seen ponies with collars and no shirt. But here that is very clearly a shirt. Uh, or he glued buttons to his chest, ow. <laughs> He's wearing a tie, a uh, tux vest. But one thing I love is that the line from the monocle comes on up to the eye. It draws you back to the face. They, they designed his clothing to make sure you're still looking him in the eye. Is it? Uh, one, and as Celestia is my witness, one day I will see that monocle pop off in surprise. <laughs> one day, one day. I said I'd see Applejack eat a strawberry, and by thunder she did. So, so yes, obviously DHX is watching me. Hi, no, no, they're, they're not. All right, so we wanna get to a Q and A session. So let us just go over a quick, few quick closing thoughts because I really do wanna stress not to be afraid of simplicity. Not to, don't, don't worry if your OC is not like standing out in a crowd. They're, if they show character in what they do and how they behave, and if you can express that through visual cues, they're gonna stand out just great. May not be famous, 
but people, horse famous, may not be horse famous or pony famous or hybrid famous or eldritch horror famous, hi Cthulhu. Uh, but fans will respond to effort. You guys saw Clutter Step when I first started. You saw Clutter Step when I uh, made improvements. Hopefully that effort shows through and people respect that. You may not become force famous, but is that the reason you're making an OC? I would hope not because I'll tell you, that won't sustain anyone. No, it's funny enough, even when we are eager for recognition, that won't sustain us. We gotta love what we do. And that's why we practice and practice. And don't be afraid to scrap a design and start over. Or to say, I, I don't like where this is going. I need to try something else. This is the time to do it. No one can fire you from a fandom. <laughs> you can't. That's very true. Well, no, he, he's not fired. That's the simple truth. He, if they want to leave, that's their decision. Ain't none of me, it's on them. It's like, guys, you, we could forgive if you want, but that's, a, that's all there is. That's on them now. But you can put forth effort and time and the worst you have to, the worst that can happen is someone hits a downvote button. Oh no. <laughs> so again, practice, enjoy what you do, understand that it's a process. And even then, even the people who think they can discourage you into silence really are powerless. Fuck them. Not my, okay, we're, kid, kids panel, kids panel. So I can share in the sentiment, but not the low, uh, word choice. All right, so it is time now. Let us see what other folks have to say, because let's do a little Q&A. And if I could ask, can we bring the mic over to this fellow who had a question? Uh, he, he's in a wheel. Chair, so can we, can we just bring it over real quick? No. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so, so, so my question was, um, let's see, what was it? Um, gosh. Take your time. Do what? Uh, no oh, um, so um, how 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 we know uh, uh, what your OC is going to uh, sound like? Sound like? Well, there's an interesting question. What does an OC sound like? I mean, okay, I can't exactly say what clutter step might sound like. I know what Silver Quill will sound like because I. But you can maybe pick a voice beforehand. Maybe you have an actor that you really like. Okay, Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible right now. I don't know if everyone's seen it. It's getting really good reviews. Well then, but you know what the actor sounds like. Maybe you want a character who sounds like Morgan Freeman. If you take a look at Morgan Freeman, Oh, but, but if you like a big baritone voice, maybe you want a big pony with large proportions, kind of big Macintosh, yep. But if you have, if you envision a pony with maybe a higher pitched voice, smaller, then, you know, maybe that uh, shorter corgi-like design uh, might be fun to try out because you expect a higher pitched voice. Now, comedy would be hearing a high pitched voice from a big Macintosh body type. But so you don't know, but you can kind of give visual cues to what people can expect a character to sound like. So, sir. So, how much does Nicole Oliver hate you? Uh, well, pretty much, uh, one, I don't know if anyone at DHS will ever see my work and probably shouldn't. They should have the freedom to just go unobstructed. But if we are to judge by the main six, oh, they all hate me. <laughs> Like double hate me, so let's, everybody's voice actor would be gunning for me. They, they're not here, are they? Well, okay, they're here, here, but not here. Oh, Celestia, she forgives me many times over. You sure about that? I hope so. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, we'll see. Hey, hey sorry, so um, basically when you were talking about the eyes, what if, uh, for example, some races actually have a different type of eye style, like Zagor. Zakora actually has a sort of a slanted triangle eye, but she's not as uh, 
evil as Sombra. Not so, as evil as Sombra, but she still has very curved eyes. And, you know, I kind of need a picture in front of me to fully appreciate her. Yeah, as of course, eyes are more... But they're also large, round. There's triangles from on her fur, or coat, rather. But, uh, but her eyes are still a gentle curve and large to show that she's welcoming, inviting. It wasn't until the ponies saw her as, uh, you know, they had their little nightmare dreams that they turned yellow and actually shrunk a little. Yeah, but I mean, because of her ra how her race is, her eyes are actually different because of it. They can be different, and it's good to experiment with different eye shapes, but at the end of the day, every person has eyes. There is, so I call any species. She has eyes. Sort of. They do. All right, so does that work? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Him. Oh, wow, God. Oh, wow, it's loud. Oh, yep, that's, that's yours. Okay, um, Silver Quill, first of all, it is an honor to meet you in person. I have been a fan of yours for a long time, but we're not here to, we're not here to feed your ego. We're here to ask questions. Oh, please do. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, just a bit of a question about an OC, a friend of mine, is designing. Uh -huh. And uh, he, I think he could really learn a lot for this panel, but uh, he's trying to go for sort of a uh, weird eye look. I kind of have to go to curvature while also being straight. You think he could do that, or do you think he should reconsider? I'm having trouble picturing a curve for Basically, ima basically imagine a triangle and put it in an oval. I'm oh, sorry, a triangle is what? Basically, imagine a triangle put in an oval. Triangle put in an oval. Okay, oh, that is interesting. Uh, I, I really hate to invoke this, but who remembers Final Fantasy X? Yes. Yuna, Yuna had the spiral eyes, the Albed style eyes. Give it a go. Sombra had more uh, serpent-like slit eyes, even though he had a round shape. So yeah, experiment. Give it a look, see, how, see what you think, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Thank you, Silverquill. My pleasure. This thing is too tall. Yo. I uh, said, I have a question. What, how do you avoid, let's say if you want to make an OC that's based off a culture, how do you make an OC based on a culture without actually insulting that culture? Oh, the sensitivity of this. This is, this is a very delicate line. Uh, my advice is first to research the culture. Look at the clothing they wear. Uh, look at the style. Hairstyles can become main styles. Clothing in, clothing in the real world can become clothing in everyday life. And 90% of the time when people offend someone with trying to emulate the culture, it's because they went with sort of a very stereotype look. If there's just enough of a flair, still going for simplicity, but something says that is the authentic shape of the, of the clothing they wear in the culture. Or that, or the shape of the eyes is reminiscent, perhaps. That's all. Eyes are a very delicate topic. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to offend anyone with that. And even then, mostly, I still think bigger, expressive eyes create a more relaxed setting. In that case, I think clothing would actually be very important to helping identify the character by culture, as long as it looks authentic. Thank you. Well, that Tumblr will get mad no matter what you do. Ain't that a sad thing? Thanks. Um, hi. Um, first, yeah, big fan of your videos and stuff. And I want to ask, involving like non pony OCs, like I from time to time use a Draconiquist as my OC. Oh, nice. Do you think that there's kind of an over, ex like a not simplicity type thing with that? Well, is it though? Uh, Discord has a lot of parts to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Chief Draconicus example. He's got a lot of parts to him, but have you ever noticed that each part is basically one solid color with an outline? Huh, yeah. So even though there's multiple parts, and some of them have, you know, a little bit of a arch, little connected archways to show the end of fur, or a coat, I keep yeah. getting terminology mixed up. Uh, they're still very simple in design, with maybe just a few spots to show this is a scale bit. So again, just enough. Oh, there's a great quote by Stephen King. One of the first rejection letters he ever got out of 75 before he ever sold one story. 75 rejections. And the person gave this great advice. Your final draft is your, is your last version minus 10%. And I think that applies also to art design. Your, your final design is what you just had 
and shave off 10%. Mm. And if you think you can lose a little more, shave that off. And that's how it worked. And that's how you scale back. Thank you, fine. Right. Thank you. Sure thing. Uh, 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 breathe, uh, man, breathe. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, so I got a couple of questions. We've got a long line, so can I trouble you for one and we can talk out in the hall, in the lobby? Okay, so will Twilight and Quarter Step Kiss at least have a date? Oh, there's a question. Yes. This I didn't really get into this topic because one way to offend to get people mad is to ship your OC with them. Oh no. I don't get why that's a bad thing. I like the, I like envisioning how our heroines would react to stories to finding deeper relationships. Yeah, and I'm sorry, the current crop doesn't impress me. Uh, but, yeah, I'll, I said it, Flash fans. I'm sorry. I'm just not there yet. Screw but, Flash line! Well, okay, okay, okay. No, no, let's not go there. I like what I like. Twi Flashlight fans enjoy it, and I hope they do. I hope they continue to. I'm more, I, I feel it's more enjoy what you enjoy. There's no need to put someone else's enjoyment down. Because that's the only way to live life in my eyes. But, so, we'll see. I gotta get, I've gotta finish Clutterstep's current story and get him back to Equestria. Hey, and there'll be more to follow, but uh, we need to move on. Thank you. Um, my question is about names, which the show itself seems to have a problem with, where we get Sunset Shimmer, Twilight Glimmer. Oh, yes. but, yeah. I'm worried about season six's <laughs> villain. Um, <laughs> A lot of people's names can be the easiest, sometimes it can be the hardest. Um, what is your kind of advice for finding a name that doesn't just sound like a remake of Rainbow Dash or something, but oh, also yes. That's, that sounds be, reasonable in the world? That can be hard. Very difficult. I mean, you know, I, I still get a laugh out of the Namby Pamby joke mm -hmm. from uh, Ponyville Confidential. Basically, start with what your character's all about. Uh, yeah. Sort of the core, once you know the core of their character, Clutter Step is meant to be clumsy. So I thought, well, okay, clum Bumble Step or Clutter Trip doesn't really work. But I thought, but the image came of a room very messy. So I just started going through words. All right, junk, mess, uh, silly, strewn. Don't trip on the clutter. Ooh, clutter. So work with that, okay. And he trips a lot. Well, you trip while you're walking. Kind of play word games with yourself. Just stop, don't look for an answer, just sort of let it stream out by word association. Or have a thesaurus on hand, and you might find something that mixes together, and like, whoa, that sounds pretty awesome. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Oh, good. I want to make sure I'm not cutting down. I've got like two, two more minutes, so let's try two more questions. Okay. I'm sorry, oh, but guys, I'm gonna relocate to the, to the hallway here in the corner. I was told very, I want to thank the staff again for saying over here, because the bathroom's over here, I don't want to camp out there. Go on over here. So I'll be in the hallway, we can ask more questions, but next two gentlemen. Speaking of color, what about the black OCs? Oh, black. Black is a unique not, property. Not alicorn black OCs, but oh, no. just typical. Black Actually, we've colors. seen we've seen black yes. uh, colors and OCs in the show. The bumblebee pony from Wonderbolts Academy. Exactly right. And you knew, hey, that must be someone's OC because very typically there aren't many dark color schemes. Uh, there's a Pegasus, blue spiked mane. He has he has a lighter, well, dark gray. Thunder really. Oh, thun oh not, not Thunderlane. This is a different character. He's got a little bit of a blue tint to him. Star Chaser, thank you. He is as close to black as I've really seen, other than Nightmare Moon. Black has a characteristic that it pushes any other color out. It's instantly stand out. And that's why black and people always joke about black and red, but it's really black in any OC is gonna look like it's trying to stand out because the black is too deep. If you lighten it up to a very dark gray, then it looks a little more pastel and a little more natural fitting with the show. That's one of, that's the one, the yellow and black OC. Yes, sir. All right, what's up, Silver? Uh, so, let's say you're making an OC and it turns out that this OC isn't something that you would expect to be within the MOP universe. Let's just say it's, it turns out to be a no. Okay. So, but you're making it with the goal of introducing it into the universe in mind. Because of this, uh, along with the okay. fact of art design, you know, okay. you, you're making a uh, 
okay, a complete I'm, new vector. Would you say it takes more effort to get this OC to a good quality when compared to doing the same, the Pony OC? I think OCs really do reflect the effort you put into them. Keeping close to the show doesn't necessarily mean it's easier, but you are going to have to experiment a lot more with shape and ask yourself, does this really look like, could I see this happening in the show? The Yaks are a great example. We never saw anything like that. But with time, effort, and focus, you can blend it to the world. And I, guys, I'm sorry, but I am very much impeding on time for the next folks. So thank you all for coming. I'll see you out in the hallway. I, I'll be out there, I promise. Hello.